Some of us are in it. And then we don't know the dangers involved. Our interest as those of us that engage in those that is to just feel happy or feel excited or just explain the euphoric aspect of it. But without taking into consideration and without taking into account the dangers and then the side effect that are associated with those drugs. So that is why this very morning I've come for us to discuss this. One may ask, when we say psychoactive drugs, what does it mean? Or when we say hard drugs, what does it mean? Can uh, any of you, you know, help us to create maybe one or two understanding when we say hard drugs or psychoactive drugs? Yes. Does anybody have an understanding uh, 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 with respect to you? And I start watching the one I mean. How do you understand? Psychoactive drugs, they have drugs. Yeah. That can stimulate someone to become happy or gain energy or become harassed to do something. Well, let's put it you know, together for you. <laughs> now, anybody else? How do you understand? What do you understand about psychoactive drugs? Or oh, hard drugs? I want to say hard drugs. No, from no understanding. Uh, to my understanding, hard drugs are drugs that have a part on our mental parts. Thank you very much. Let's put it for it. Yes. We want to know, know what you know, ascertain how we understand it, psychoactive drugs or hard drugs. Uh -huh. Hard drugs are drugs that takes the mind to a different state of level. And it increases your ability, your, your mind to get to a different level. Okay. Uh, let's put it together for him. Yeah. Oh, you can speak cheap. No problem. You can speak cheap. I'm glad you grew up in it. Okay. Thank you very much. Let's keep it together. I'm sorry, I have that video. Psychoactive, uh, psychoactive drugs are drugs that makes the body work unnaturally and abnormally. Thank you very much. Uh, last one, then we set the ball rolling. I appreciate all the answers we have, you know. Psychoactive drugs are drugs. It's a substance actually which insulates the body, the mind, and your whole being, your whole being to actually take you high or get you. That is fine. Let's put it together for. I appreciate all the answers you have given. That's very nice. This indicates that we are, all of us here have uh, a pre knowledge about psychoactive drugs. Today we are coming to dive into it and understand what they are, what are the characteristics <coughs> or the features of those drugs. When we consume them, what did they do in our system after? If you have any question, you put it down so that we address them. Now, let's you know focus our attention here. When we say psychoactive drugs, like we just said, we may have a whole lot of you no know, definition with that respect. But then what we have here, it says that it is a drug, or they are drugs that have the tendency. Look at the technology here. They have what? They are substances that have the tendency and the ability to change the physical structure and the functions of what? The of the brain. They are drugs. They are substances that have the tendency, they have the ability to change your brain structure and also distort the functions of the brain. I hope you're getting it. Yeah. So your brain physical structure will be looking at it. The drugs, they have that you know, ability to change it and also distort the way the brain functions, the way our internal organs, the lungs, the heart, the liver, the kidney, and other vital organs, the way they function. Again, they say they are drugs that also have the ability to affect our decision making. 
they are what? Drugs that have the ability to affect our decision making, our thinking pattern, our judgment, our planning, our problem solving ability, our learning, our memory, our reasoning, and other, you know, functions. They even affect our operational function. That's our ability to just get up, to go and initiate work, or to do, or to function. They are drugs that affect all those things. Psychoactive drugs are drugs that have the ability to influence our behavior. They influence our behavior. So it means that aside the fact that they influence our thoughts, our uh, decision making, our problem solving ability, our professional function, they again also have the tendency to influence our behavior negatively. They can influence us to act and behave in a certain manner unaware before we become aware of it. We have already committed the word, the act. And as a result, it has put a lot of people in cells and prison. Why? Because some of them go and take the drug, and the drug influences them to engage in certain behavior unaware. We'll be looking at them. Now, one may ask, what are the examples of these drugs you are making mention of? We have alcohol, weed, that's marijuana, <coughs> cocaine. Example of the drugs I want to mention alcohol, and some appet appetition, weed, that's marijuana, cocaine. We have cigarettes. Sisha, hashish, we have amnesia, we have heroin, Thai, uh, rock and Thai, we have Colorado, all these drugs fall under the category of what? Psychoactive drugs. We have snuff, astra. These drugs I'm making mention of have the tendency and the ability to influence our decision making, our emotions, our mood, <laughs> our thinking pattern, our problem solving ability. They have the ability to change our brain structure. We have psychoactive pills. Aside those that I've mentioned, we have psychoactive pills which include Tramadol, B2, D10, Ecstasy, Amphetamine, Codeine, Diphes, Corfes, Rafnor, Benalin, Letalin, Retalin, 225, 250, 50. Cross and die, thank you, chase me. <laughs> Chase me. All these drugs I've made mention of fall under the category of what? Psychoactive drugs. Yeah? Uh -huh. Caterpillar. Fine. So there are more that you bring on board. That's fine. I appreciate that. No? These drugs I've made mention of are causing severe damage to our brain, to our lungs, to our kidney, to our liver. The heart, I swear, thank you very much. Bro, the drugs are causing severe damages to our system. Now, one may ask, so how come somebody you know, just get up and go into these drugs? We have a whole lot of factors. Broken home is one. Broken home is one of the factors that induce people to want to go into drugs. Lack of parental care is one of the factors. Peer pressure <coughs> is also one of the you know, factors. Peer pressure, I feel, I'm a fake go. Experiment, you get it? You have some people who 
engage when they are doing it. it will, let me also go and try it. And at the end of the day, they become addicted. Again, we have as easy accessibility. When the drugs are easily reached, the drugs are closer to where you live or where you are. You can easily fall a victim. Now, <coughs> you see, all these drugs fall under psychoactive. Beer, yeah. Beer, style, doses. Now, as I said, one may ask, so when you take these drugs, where do they go? Where do those drugs go? Because some of us, what we are interested in is just keeping us high, like one of our brothers just said. Keeping us what high, that is all. But without knowing the consequences, without knowing where do those drugs go and what do they go to do. Now, this is our body system. You see? Our system, this is how it looks like. We have the brain, the head, that we see on our neck. We have this organ inside. This is what is called brain, human brain. We look at it. We have the lungs. We have the heart, like our brother said. We have the stomach. We have the liver. We have the kidney. We have the bladder. And we have the intestine. The other organs. But basically, we are looking at these organs. How those drugs that we are taking, how those drugs some of us are engaging in, are affecting these internal organs. Prior to this, the drugs that we have been taking, they have some features that we are not aware of. They have some characteristics. And one of these characteristics is that the drugs are corrosive. I see some of us, some of us here are science students. Yeah. Please, sir, language in here too much of English and they want me to be here. You can lower let me so that you can we want to send a, a, a message. You see, some of the drugs mm -hmm. eh, that we consume, the hard drugs that I've made mention of, some of them are corrosive. The science student among you always say something is corrosive. <laughs> what does it mean? To well solve the. Thank you very much. Put it, for, put it together for him. It wears off. Eh? It wears off. It eats up your cells, your tissues. You get it. When something is corrosive, it means they are very strong to extend. And when they get into your system, they eat up the cells. They eat up the tissues in your organs. Some of the drugs also have burning sensation and inflammatory effect. <laughs> Uh, some of us, you don't know what I was going to get and sit down, we we'll pop, then we go. My family. Bro, if you know the mechanism you are putting into your system, that is why we are here this morning to let you know when we finish whatever question we have, we bring it to a board. Because there are a whole lot of misconceptions. We address them. If not even today, there are more days ahead of us. We cannot tackle that. But let's you know, focus here. I said what? Some of the drugs are corrosive. Mm -hmm. Which our brother just explained that when he says something is corrosive, it means they wear off. They eat up your cells. <coughs> they eat up the, you know, the tissues of your system. Every way, eh? Every way, the pregnant one, or tissues, you know. And I said they have burning sensation and inflammatory what effect. What it means is that when you consume those drugs, they can burn some of your internal organs. They have the ability to burn some of your internal organs. And again, also cause inflammation to some of your internal organs. I don't know where you are getting the picture. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Some of the drugs, has, you know, some of them have the ability mm -hmm. to cause shrinkage. They shrink. Eh? They have the, the area. They have the ability to shrink your brain cells and then some of your internal organ cells. Shrink it. Shrink means what? What do you want to make it? Shrink. To shrink. A shrink chain. Thank you very much. Let's put together for him. A shrink chain. You see, when you go to the stream and you catch tilapia, fresh form, you see how you know, big it is in size. 
bring it out there, and then maybe sort it, put a lot of salt you know, on it. What will you see? It shrinks. It shrinks, thank you. And you know, those drugs, you know, some of them shrink. Eh? A shrinking brain cells, you know, a shrinking tissue cell, a tissue cell, and why you need to be a shrinking. You know. I hope you're getting it. Now, at the same time, those drugs that have been taken, weed, cocaine, cigarettes, shisha, tramor, codeine, hashish, raffinol, heroin, banana, letalin, amphetamine, codeine, ecstasy, B2, D10, what have you? They also have the ability. They have the potency and then the tendency eh, to change the physical structure of the organs. So if the organ is being designed in a rectangular form, it will change the structure. It will cause it to flame. Do you get it? It will, it will flame it. <coughs> that is why I've not reached the door, but let me give it to some of those who get deep liver damage. Eventually, you see their tummy or stomach protruding. You get on because they take the drugs to extend the when the liver gets damaged. It protrudes the, the tummy. You have changed the physical structure of the world. Of the, of, the, of, the, of the liver or whatever organ. I hope you are getting it. They are very destructive. The chemicals that are taking in, I'm, I'm not letting you know that the physical features, the characteristics of those drugs, so that if God helps us and get us out of this situation and we go back to our various homes, we don't go and what? Continue on go, we don't go and take it again. Today we are all blessed that we are here. Some of the drugs eh, have the potential to do what? What did I say? To, to shrink and also to cause destructive to those others. <clears throat> you know one secret thing about those drugs you are mentioning? <clears throat> they also have the capability and eh, or they are highly addictive in nature. We Cigarette, shisha, tramor, codeine, hashish, raffinol, banana, letalin, those drugs. They are highly what? Addictive. Addictive. Which means when you start, eh, gradually to be pulling you, wherever you are standing, this is where the eh, addictive nature of, eh, of the, the drugs is. So if you throw the rope and to be pulling you gradually, gradually, this is the hole, this is where the hole is. So it will pull you, pull you gradually. Oh, once a year. Oh, me, I take it once a year. Eh, okay, fine. You realize that time will come no more once a year. Eh, eh, twice a year. Eh, twice a year. Time will come to me once a month. Eh, 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 once a week. Eh, 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 once a day. Continuously. Then to become, you know, repeated, you know, with behavior. Why? Ask yourself. Why is there something ah, initially I was taking it once, once? But now I've become addicted to it. The secret is that those chemicals, those drugs, are highly addicted. Meaning that they have the, you know, the tendency to change your system for you to form a behavior, a habit to the drug. To understand that it will keep you. I don't know whether you are getting the picture. Thank you very much. Now, Now let's see. We are looking at the physical nature of our system. Okay, and that is that I have to end so that the next class will take please like good. But I will be visiting you more often. So you know where I will reach when the time is I will let you leave. Eh? Uh, now let's look at our system. You see, this video shows how your system looks like. You see where your liver is located, you see your diaphragm, you see your lungs, you see where your heart is. You see your heart is temporary sitting seated here at his beating. You see, this one is indicating to you where your how your system works for print. You see our scar, this is what you find inside the brain. 
The Almighty was praying. This is the engine of the body. We look at it. Now, let's look at it from this video too as well. This is our antenna system. Some of us are here. It's limited. You see how our antenna system, you know, and I said it's limited to other, no more than 30. So you see how our antenna system actually looks like. Yeah. You see our brain? Yeah. You see our trachea? You see our lights? You see our diaphragm and then the other internal organs. And I told you, those chemicals that we are injecting into our system through the drugs we've been taking, they adversely, negatively affect these internal organs. What has happened to us? The first organ we look at is the brain. This is the almighty brain. This is the engine of your body. This organ is very, very critical and crucial, bro. This organ, God has made it such a way that it has a mechanism called black brain barrier. Anything black brain barrier, anything that passes through the blood and goes in there, it has a mechanism to check, to screen it, to detect. Hey, we don't need you here. This place is very, very, you know, uh, 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 critical. So we don't need you here. And it, it what? It will prevent you from entering into the brain. Because the brain is very critical. Damage to the brain reflect in your body. A weak brain is associated with what? A weak body. So when you destroy this brain with drugs, it will reflect in your body system. A time will come, the body will become weak. You cannot embark on any occupational function. What you make maybe you are weak 24-7. You see your colleagues going up and down. Why because we have destroyed the brain with drugs. See, this brain is an organ that enables you to think way and then one ultimate journey. This organ and the one with no reason. This organ, when I come and tell you something, I need an answer for me. So it is this organ that you interpret, then you give me an answer. I come and tell you something, oh, my mother and you are in It is this brain that is going to process the information, what I've told you, and provide an answer. You see, when I ask what is a quality of some of you came up with answers. It is the brain. Thank you very much. It is the brain that you process. What I ask for you to come up with something, bro. This brain is very critical, and most of the youth are destroying this brain with drugs, with weed, with cigarette, with shisha, with trauma, with code, with hashish, with all sorts of hard substances. Let's protect our brain, let's cherish our system. Now, let's look at this. See how our brain looks like. In our head. You see, as we are seated, this is how our brain is fixed in our head. You see? And then inside the brain, there are a whole lot of neurons and nerve cells that are connected to one another. And then they send, they send signal. That is why I want to pinch you. You have a question. When I finish. Can the brain heal itself? Sorry? Can the brain heal itself? Uh, yeah, yeah. So when we, we finish, you, you will bring whatever. You see, inside the brain, we have neurons, nerve cells, and they are connected to one another. You see? So when the signal happens, it travels, it goes. That is why I want to pinch you here. And when I pinch here, you feel it. When you step on any hard object, you feel it. When you hit your leg against something, you feel it. Why? The brain is connected to every part of the body. I'm not making, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. so this is how our brain is. 
and then majority of us are destroying the breed. Now let's see, when we go and hide in the ghetto, when we go and hide in our rooms, or whatever places we go and then do their drugs, we are come to you know, watch a video on how, when we consume those drugs, the mechanism that takes place. I was if you go and consume it, we go away. The fine you want to make, have you asked yourself, the drugs you put into your system, have you asked yourself, how, what's the mechanism? Let's see. Now look at this gentleman. He's at his hidden place. He's taking his cigarette or whatever smoke, whether weed, amnesia, shisha, what the video was. And then we yeah, have see if somebody can critically analyze the video. Yeah. Can somebody tell us how I should put it for a second time? Yes. 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 Okay. It's telling you if you go and hide anywhere, you take either skeleton, weed, shisha, hashish, amnesia, whatever. The mechanism that occurs in your system. Okay, who can tell me what he saw? Because there's no uh, lady here, so I'll say. If there are ladies here, we see what he or she saw, but here yeah, all are men. So, yeah, what, what did we see in the video? Uh, the smoke, uh, immediately the smoke entered the, uh, immediately the smoke entered the lungs. So, it jeopardized and collapsed the uh, lungs and also the lungs. Okay, that's how he saw the video. Thank you. Let's put it together for him. Yes? What can also, you know, yeah, hear me, bro. What did you see in the video? When the smoke enters the body, it passed through the heart. And goes through the lungs and comes straight back to the brain. Let's put it together for him. You see, this video is telling us the processes, the mechanism involved when we go and hide in any place or any ghetto and we take weed, we smoke or cigarette, we smoke or shisha, we smoke or amnesia, we smoke or hashish. When we we, we inhale, eh? As soon as we inhale it, it passes through our nasal cavity, that's our nostrils. Then, through our trachea, that the pharynx through the trachea, it goes to what? It goes where? Uh -huh. Our lungs. Thank you. <laughs> so if your 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 thinking is that when you go, the smoke is coming out and you are deceiving yourself. So it passes through our trachea. It goes to our lungs. Then, you know, when it gets to the lungs, now from the trachea to the bronchia, the bronchioles to the alveolar in our lungs. When it gets in there, it doesn't stay there. Then it travels through the blood wall stream. I'll show it again. It travels through the blood stream <coughs> to the heart. And the heart will do what? Will pump it because that's the function of the heart. The heart pumps blood. Some of us that give signs. The main function of the heart is to separate what blood. So the heart will then pump it. Then about 80% of the tracks that we put in will travel to where? Yeah. Thank you very much. Let's watch the video for the last time before we move on to another one. When it's 11, 15, I'll pause so that uh, uh, get some questions from you. The next day, when you know time permits us, we will come again and continue. Because we are in all of us here. Now let's watch the video for the second time. Or for the third time. If you have, have any question, you can touch it down. So look at it. The man is hiding his ghetto. The prophet, the smoke enters the lungs. You see beneath it, you see the blood stream. This is where this is the channel through which our blood travels. It travels to the lungs, to the heart, sorry. It travels to the heart, then the heart pumps about 80% of the drug that we've taken 
goes directly to where the brain. And we shall see what it happens or what happens when those man gets there. Let's watch this one too. Look at this. This one has to do with a cigarette. When you inhale it, you have to pump it. Where is it going? Yeah, Thank you very much. You see the chemical that I found, let's get it. We will look at that later on in our subsequent you know, uh, presentation. You see the chemicals involved. We are not you know, interested in the chemical. We want to see the, how it travels. You see? So, what can you see here? What can you see here? Good. What is he doing? The smoke is where? Traveling to where? To the brain. Our body looks like how the brain is connected to every aspect of our body. Have you seen it? So when you go to the blue kiosk, whatever pub, whatever nightclub, whatever you know uh, drinking spot you go, and you're taking alcohol, let's watch it quick here. When you're taking alcohol, we are looking at how alcohol you know enters the brain. Let's look at it. So as soon as you're taking alcohol, you see it has entered. Yeah. Did you watch it? Yeah. So as soon as you take it, eh, you take the glass, you put it into your system. As soon as that goes, enters your system. Only 20% remain in your stomach. The rest passes through your, you know, the small intestine, the, the heart will then pump it. You see, that call is traveling along the heart, your bloodstream. Let's see where it is going. Where is it going? So when you see somebody getting intoxicated, who will be no abo? No, 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 yes, no, 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 one, two, five, fifty, uh -huh. one, twenty. Yes, again. Yeah, yes, that's good. Cobranit me, Cobranit me, fat. No, we say we should no more boys. So, look at what is happening. So, as soon as you take those drugs, it passes through your throat, it goes to your system. When it goes to your system, let's see. The first point of call, it goes to the stomach, then it starts affecting the what? The liver. See what it, it will do to the liver. Then after, it will not stop there. Then it will go to the heart. Then the heart what will pump it. You see, when the heart pumps it, let's see where it will go. Whether it will pass through the anus or where. Where is it going? Where is it going? Where is it going? Thank you. <laughs> So let's watch this video. So when those drugs go to the brain, you see the mechanism yeah. taking place here. Have you seen it? Yeah. So when the drugs go to the brain, they create a lot of, you know, chemical reaction in the brain. They, they release a lot of chemicals in the brain. And then the brain, what supports the brain to function very well is what? 
the food that you eat, the nutrients, the glucose. Good. That's what the brain utilizes. Two, the brain also uses the blood that is in our system to function. The brain also uses the oxygen that we hear. In family, I'm going to call you. Brain needs you to be a human. But the family, in some areas, the brain needs you to be a human. It is a offer those drugs. When you consume those drugs, and the drugs go to the brain, eh? The drugs release certain chemicals, harmful chemicals in your brain. And these chemicals, what they do is, they prevent the amount of blood that the brain needs to function. Am I making sense here? Yes, 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 yes. Yes. When you take the drugs and they travel to the brain, they go there to release a lot of chemicals. Yes. Which I'll be mentioned when we get to the light. A lot of chemicals, and these chemicals are harmful. They are dangerous and they are poisonous to your brain. Some are cancerous chemicals, which they have the ability to cause cancer. They have the ability, I told you from the beginning, that some of the drugs have the tendency to shrink whatever organ they get in touch with. Did I say that? Yeah. Good. So when they get to the brain, they start shrinking the brain cells. They start killing the brain cells. They start, yes, they start destroying the brain cells. So you realize that they will deny the brain of oxygen. They prevent the amount of blood that the brain needs. They deny the brain of oxygen. Do you get my point here? So you realize that the brain will start deteriorating. The brain starts what? Deteriorate. The brain will start reducing in size. The brain can no longer function the way it's supposed to because of the drugs you are injecting in it. So a time will come. Let's see what will happen to the brain. So you see how the brain looks like. So what's day in day out? You are injecting or you are exposing your brain to, the, to those drugs. Gradually, you see that the brain will start to inflame. Mm -hmm. And if you say, now I say, a glass of corn, I say, 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 I the damages you are causing to the brain. You see? Are you missing it? <coughs> so, the time will come. Oh, you see, fresh brain, you see what it is turning to. At the end of the day, have you seen it? Eventually, you see what has happened. And if you don't stop and you keep doing it, let's see what happened to the brain. <coughs> have you seen it? Yes. So this is the likelihood. Fresh brain, this is how it looks like. So once you start exposing your brain to those drugs gradually, you see what has happened to the brain. The brain, the shrinkage we talk about, the brain will start shrink. You see what has happened to the brain. And then, the brain is at two sides stage, we are. And she at two sides stage, we are, bro. At this stage, at this stage, why are you coded? At this stage, why are you chunky? Bro, at this stage, eh, why are you totally dark? You can't take right, you can't plan, you can't make decisions for yourself, you can't make good choices, you can't, you know, uh, 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 embark on any occupational function. No? There's no any meaningful thing you can do. All that your brain will be telling you to do is to just go to the monk. Always sitting in the monk, just satisfying your libido with drugs. And then when the brain reach this stage, bro, simple, simple issues, simple, simple matters, which need only you know, simple understanding, it becomes very difficult. I hope you're getting it. Simple issues that you have to tackle, you can tackle as a man. Why? Because you have destroyed the brain cells with drugs. So the brain can no longer function. 
So a time will come. If you don't stop and keep doing it, then the brain will reach this stage. One say, one now, as a leaper, but one call for you, or down for you, or you say, I can't know, I can't know, I can't know, there's a problem with it. So anything you say, they don't even take it. We are letting you know. Not only the brain do those back affect. I said they also affect where the lungs, the kidney, and the organs. Now let's look at it. Brain in this house, they are wrong. Open some of them, boys will be because brain has said, Yeah, I am on the Yamasa. Say, Yana, Yana, Yadom. Now, one year for Pierre and some woman have a visa. Now, one minute, Pierre rehabilitation center. No, no, Pastor, and no, 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 by his grace, we have not gone to engage in certain acts and behavior that will lead us to, you know, prison. a prison. Yeah, but we are still alive. We are in here receiving, you know, recovery measures. Yeah. We, are, we should count ourselves blessed. Some are in what? In some own prison. And careful prison. Other prisons in the country. Why? Because the drug influence them. And then they go and engage themselves in certain behaviors. Unaware, before they became aware, they are in the cells. Go to court, come to court, go to court, come to cell, go to court. Eventually, you give them five years, three years, three years, and cool. But we are fortunate enough to find ourselves in a rehabilitation center. We should be proud and we should be hopeful that God will you know, recover us and will become and serve the purpose He has set for us. Bro, let's look at the lip, the dance. You see, I think I'll, re I'll rest the discussion here. The whole lot of videos and pictures have to let you. I'll be in the subsequent days. You see how our lunch looks like? Everybody has it. We have left and right lungs. God has put it there to enable us to take in oxygen and from it and bring out carbon dioxide. The science student among us. Everybody is aware that the lungs, the main function is to enable us to exchange gases within our environment. As we are seated here, we are taking oxygen and we are bringing out carbon dioxide. Is that not so? Yes, that is the function of this organ. <coughs> when some of us get down, what we do is we use this drug, this organ to do drugs. We expose this organ to drugs. Now let's see how the lungs function. You see? You see our lungs? You see how the lungs is functioning? Good. Let me take it again. You see, it contracts, it relaxes. It contracts, it relaxes. When it contracts, it brings out carbon dioxide. When it relaxes, it takes in oxygen. That's the how you know the lungs function. Let's look at it. So whilst we are seated here, we are taking oxygen. You see, so the oxygen will pass through our nostrils, it gets to our trachea, then goes to our bronchi, to our lungs, alveoli. The oxygen goes there to, de to, to, know, to be deposited there. So when the heart pumps the blood to get there, then the oxygen will fuse into the blood, and then the, it will go back to the heart, the heart what, will separate to every aspect of the body, so that all organs in your system will receive what oxygen. That is the function of the lungs. You see, that's what we are seeing. Now let's see what some of the youth use the lungs for. Let's look at it. They go to their hiding places and then they take either cigarette, shisha, or weed, or whatever. See, when you hear it, you see how it is traveling to your trachea. Where is it going? Lungs, thank you. Let me take it again, then we'll look, we'll check the next video. You see? 
The same way we also travel, the same way Shisha also travels through our land, our trachea to our land. So we heal it, it passes through here. As it is passing here to your lungs, it is causing irritation, damages in your throat. We'll be looking at it in our subsequent meeting. You see? Okay. Now let's watch this video. You see how the lungs look fresh? So the more you are exposing your lungs to smoking, the more day in, day out, you go out there, you take weed, shisha, hashish, eh, eh, amnesia, and you, you, you inhale it, you smoke it. What time? See what will happen to your lungs. Have you seen it? We are playing it for the second time. You see? He's in his ghetto. He's not aware of what is happening in the system. He just gets in there. But the white managed to connect a high you know, microscope to check gradually what is happening to the lungs. What has the lungs turned to? Yes, you can tell me. Black. Now, you see the smoke that is entering into the lungs. Eh? Look at this. Look at it. Good. You see the smoke that is entering into the lungs. Do you, know, do you know the chemicals that are that that are found in the lungs in the smoke? Yeah. Do you, thank you very much, boss. Do you know the content that you know are found in the smoke you are putting into your lungs? Uh, who can tell me? There's some students among us. Who can tell me some of the you know chemicals that are found in the smoke? Nikoti, thank you. Let's put it together for him. Nikoti is one of it. Yes, what again? Yes? Okay, fine. Let's look at the chemicals. Those who have pen and paper, let's write it there. One, hydrocyanide. <laughs> a very dangerous chemical. When you go, or when you get to your comfort zone, you just be searching what hydrocyanide is. Hydrocyanide is one of the chemicals that is found in the smoke you are putting into your system. Formidehyde. It's another chemical that is found in the smoke. Eh? What the guy is putting in the system. Eh? Hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons. It's another smoke. And another chemical that is found in the smoke. What about carbon dioxide? Thank you. Put it together for him. Woo. Now, ammonia is one of it. Wow. Acetic acid is one of it. Eh? Acetic acid is one of it. We have Asoto, we have sulfuric acid, eh? we have butane, we have benzene, we have cadmium, we have chromium, we have carbon monoxide, like what our gentleman just you know, mentioned. We have carbon monoxide in it. The carbon monoxide, you know the carbon monoxide? Carbon monoxide. Uh -huh. It's found in cars, the, the, the exhaust, you know, the fumes that come out of cars, vehicles, motorbikes, and those, those things, they are found in the smoke. The gentleman is putting it into the system. <laughs> eh? We have hexamine, we have lead, mercury, methanol. Eh? Are you listening? The chemicals we are putting into your system, <laughs> maybe you have no idea. We have radioactive materials, radioactive materials, or radioactive elements. We have tobacco specific nitrosemine, a dangerous chemical. I said today we are here to enlighten ourselves on some of the things we were then doing by His grace. It's helping us to get out of it. So when we thank God, we should give the second, you know, glory and thanks to the money, the, the, the management in this, you know, facility for helping us, helping us to get out of this, you know, social cancer. You see, the chemical that I found into the most dangerous one is what I mentioned. There are numerous chemicals, the dangerous one. Those who have those that have the ability to cause cancer is what I mentioned. Tobacco specific nitrosemine. <coughs> we have Julian. We have polonium 210. The chemical that I found in the smoke. We have tar, the most dangerous chemical that actually darkens the water, the light. Tar, TAR. And that chemical is mostly found in coca. 
Those quarter are the road. A go. And it's here now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lance, black. It's in my head. Come now, yeah, black. Eh? It's a black, black, brown, black. You know, pigment here. A walk smoking. Rock. Yeah. One of them do in preparation. No, yeah, careful. If you're not careful, those chemicals will turn your lungs to this. So this video tells you that. If you go a height, eh? If you go a height in the ghetto, and you take weed, or cigarette, or shisha, or amnesia, or hashish, and you start inhaling to your system, don't think far, don't go far. Bear in mind that you have intentionally and deliberately, eh? You have gone to buy black paint, and you are painting your lungs. So in the near future, when your lungs start pulling you, dragging you. Telling you that some years back <laughs> you deteriorated myself and I'm paying you back. Don't put the blame on anybody. <laughs> Let's see. Am I making sense? Yes. Look at this experiment. Exactly 11 10, our course here. So that we do the questions and answers. Our subsequent days, we'll be looking at how drugs have actually damaged some people's physical appearances and stuff. Let's look at this experiment. You know, in advanced country, eh? In advanced country, there are some people, those in the medical firm. Sometimes when they are passed to, when they are about to pass on, or they are about to die, they can they sign a bond. Oh, when I die, because of the purposes of education. You can take any part of my body to do experiment yeah. for human humanity's sake. So I think this man actually did that. So when he died, his life was removed. Wanted to, they wanted to find out that you know, how smoking actually severely affects human lungs. So they put good how it, it it damages you know lungs. So they put the lungs. In what in a machine and they connected it to a tube and they they inserted cigarette to it and they lighted it. Let's see the experiment. We shall learn something here. Please don't don't don't, don't let us doze off. Some of us we see some of you are losing off. Let us you know open our eyes. I think if it was Shatawale, we will see everybody, some will be standing on the on top of the building watching. Let's take a lesson here. Every time I talk about the stone boy, you see people. We start, start with me sitting on the fence and watch it. That would be hey, hey, hey. Please, let's take you off. Uh, let's focus here. You see the lungs. This one shows how our lungs function. You see, it is inflamed. So, as one say, breathe in, out. So in, then the lungs inflame. <coughs> Then take in the oxygen. Then bring out the carbon. That's how the lungs, you know, function. Now let's see. So when you, you pull, the more you open your lungs for everything that enters. Yeah, have, have you seen it? You see, it is inflaming. So when you take this gate or weed and you are you are inhaling, you are opening your lungs, free gate for whatever uh, smoke, whatever bacteria that is accompanied by the smoke to enter. Whatever foreign material accompanying with the smoke, you are open it to enter. Let's take lessons here. Now you see. Uh -huh. So watch it. You see the, the cigarette. Yes. Look amount of smoke you are putting into your system. Have you seen it? So day in day out, you are injecting your lungs with this smoke. Now let's see what happened. Now when you take in the smoke. You know it is hot. You see how the, the fire in it makes the smoke hot. You know that. You see the fire in it. You see the thing is getting flaked. Let's look at it here. See, you know, you take the smoke, you light it, then you pull, then you pull. You see the the smoke that is entering into your system is already hot. Hot. Is that also? So the heat. That is accompanied by the smoke. It's causing what is called burning sensation. 
It is causing what? Belly sensation. So it is inflaming, it is causing inflammation on the lungs. I have a crow too, I have a crow too, I have a crow too, and when I say shabu is written in South Africa, who has known that because of my brother, because I have to always put everything in English. And who has expressed what what has been body before? Yeah, what does it do? As a sense, it swells, right? It swells, right? it swells. Thank you. So the heat in the smoke that is entering to your system will swell the lungs. It will cause what is called lung inflammation or on, on top of the lungs. Now let's look at the in, let's look inside the lungs. See, you see what has happened to the lungs outer. Now let's look at the inside. So we haven't seen it yet. You will understand. You are very You see? So this one, see the outer layer of the lungs. This one is tra the trachea. Yeah? Your mean your throat. This is how it looks like. Somebody who doesn't smoke, that's how his trachea looks like. Very clean. You see, the surface, what does the heat of the smoke has caused to the lungs? And then we will check the inside of the lungs, what has happened. Can you see? Can you see the inside? Can you see the inside? What do you see there? Black pigment. The black pigment I'm talking about, that's the tar, T-A-R. Yeah, and I hear inside black sand. So imagine. Day in, day out, you go to the ghetto, you expose your lungs to smoke. You see what you are causing to your system. So, we are here to, you know, concentrate you, to make you aware. Maybe for all this work, you are not aware of the dangers, the severe dangers we are causing to your internal organs. Have you seen it? Day in day out you go, just as you just were uh, excited. You were just two minutes, three minutes excitement you get. You think that is all? You see the damage? No, I can't hear. You see? You see? Original land, smoker's land. You see how the top all are inflamed. And then look at it, they will open inside. This is original land. Look at the smoker's land. Did you see inside? How black the inside is. Let me go for it. Let me play that question again. Look at it. Look at the inside way. Have you seen it? No. Did you see? Yes. Good. Yes. So, if you care, it's not taking. Stop, you don't stop. Stop, you don't stop. And you continue with it. This is what can happen to your lungs. You see? Lung inflammation. You can get lung cancer. You can get lung cancer. You see lung cancer here? You can get lung damage, lung injury. There are some diseases that you can also encounter. One is called acute distress, acute respiratory distress syndrome. It's a severe disease. Acute. What are those who have played people? You can write acute respiratory distress syndrome. You know the disease? It's a type of disease that mostly affects the lungs as a result of what? Drugs. As a result of what? Smoking. As a result of what? Taking the alcohol. As a result of what? Doing hard drugs. And then at the end of the day, when you take the drug, that's, you know, disease I'm talking about. Eh? Do you know the disease? Let our focus come here. The disease that I'm talking about, that's acute respiratory distress syndrome. What it does is. No, it's not anything to you. What it does is. It causes swelling, yeah? it, it causes you know, abnormal phlegm in your system. Abnormal phlegm in your system. And at the end of the day, if you are not careful, you continuous, you know, cough. You encounter, you know, uh, continuous word, cough. And if you are not careful, you can cough blood. You see? I hope you see here. How people are suffering from what? Coffee. As a result of smoking. Now, I'm left with two minutes for me to end so that whatever question that you have, you bring it to your board for us to address. But there are a whole lot of uh, pictures and videos that you'll be looking at. Let's look at it. Less than two minutes. 
When you take your drugs to some level and you don't stop eh, at the point in time, this is what can happen to you. We shall be discussing it, not now. Our subsequent day we'll be looking at it. We will see how drugs have, you know, changed some people's physical makeup, their physical appearance, the way the drugs have damaged a lot of people. We'll be looking at how the drugs have put people in situations that they don't like. I hope you're getting it. We'll look at how the drugs have actually changed some people to become anonymous. How some of the drugs you know, have induced people to engage in certain behavior that they are not aware of. Our subsequent meeting, we're looking at how drugs have put people in cells, prisons. We look at how, you know, some people started it, their lifestyle, they started the drugs, the advice that they need to take, how the drugs change their personality, and then they also, you know, render them eh, in a particular occupation they didn't like, or they, they were not even aware they would reach there. See, and then they're missing them. You see, eventually they died and they were buried. There are some videos you'll be watching, less than one minute. You see, what drugs have caused some people? Let me 15, so I'm left to 15 minutes to time. Whilst you know, we are watching the videos, if you have any questions, you can bring it on board. Yeah. He's asking a question here. We are, we, are, we are left to 15 minutes to end. And then the other 15 minutes is for questions and answers. So, bro, uh -huh. what's the question? The beginning of the uh, Yeah. Yes. Is that what? Pain. Yeah, he's asking a question. You know, he's saying that when smoke enters your head, uh, when it, like the way it enters the heart, uh, it enters the system, it enters the lungs, it passes through the bloodstream, it goes to the heart, then the heart pumps and goes to the brain. Does it cause, you know, uh, uh, head pain? Is that not so? Is that not so? Uh -huh. You see, back out, he swimming, he thought it was a swimming pool. You see what grass can do to people? Uh -huh. Yeah, the question you ask, you see, at the point in time, gradually, when you are doing it, you may not feel the impact. As you are doing it, well, a time will come. Once you, a day in there, you go to the ghetto, you go and do it. The, the, the consequences is falling up gradually, 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 gradually. If you don't stop, that's why I say, count yourself blessed that today you are here. Whichever family that brought you here, when you go down your knees and thank God, you thank the administration. The one that brought this facility into being, you thank him and you thank your family. The rest, give it to your family. For see to you that you are going wayward or you are going, you are passing a, tra a trend that can bring, you know, severe damage to yourself. And they have brought you here for you to be recovered. You thank them. So if you don't stop, if they are not brought you here for you to go through the recovery measures and then continue, and then the, 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 the severity starts, you know, popping up. It is there you start experiencing that kind of you know, headache you are talking about. Because at that time, you have destroyed the brain. How we get it? Yes. But for now, as you are doing it, you may not see you are piling it up. I like Susu. Oh, Palia. Oh, yes, you should not do preference. You'll be a whole Is that not so? That's it. So, whilst you are planning, I'm then it's a pretty cool Sorry. Oh, sometimes there can be maybe normal sickness, which you can get. This is, yeah, and then you can get medications for that. You mentioned that uh, uh, most of these drugs are addictive. Yeah. And including marijuana. Marijuana. Oh, can you take this? Because someone wants to benefit from the person. From the research that I have, I have looked at, marijuana is not addictive. 
they say what they say is that it has a psychological dependency, but it's not addictive. And for instance, myself, when I stop smoking, I've stopped smoking like maybe four weeks now. And I don't feel like smoking it. When I see it, I will smoke. But when I don't see it, but when I when I am around, I I I feel for. Are you recording the question? Okay. When I'm around, I feel for for more quiet. Yes. Every day, if I get it now, 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 I'll smoke. Oh. Okay. 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 Well, please, he has asked a question. Let let us address it. Uh, hello. Amen. Uh, I like the way he posed the question. Yeah. Uh, he said he was once a smoker, a uh, marijuana smoker. Is that not so? Yeah. Uh -huh. when he stopped for a second. But when you see it, you feel like going there again. Is that not so? Thank you. You know, marijuana, that's we. We is highly addictive. Yes. We, or marijuana, about some tire, or about some tire. Tawa, tawa, tawa. It's highly addictive. Why? They contain certain chemicals. Yeah. Mm. Nicotine is inside. Yes. So write the nicotine down. And then when you get, you know, an appetite, set what nicotine does <laughs> to our system or to our brain. Now, aside the nicotine that the weed contain, eh, it has certain severe brain damage chemicals, two chemicals. One is called cannabinol. Genio. One is called what? Cannabinol. And another one is called detanine tetra hydrocannabinol. Thank you. Put it together for the gentleman. Who said it? Yeah. And the two chemicals, the cannabinol, and then detanine tetra hydrocannabinol. That very particular, the second one I just meant to mention, the tonight, the uh, tetrahydrocan is very, very dangerous. And do you know what it does to the brain? When it gets to the brain, eh, within your brain, there are some structures. Within your brain, we have the brain, we have the forebrain, midbrain, hindbrain. Within the forebrain, there are some subcortical structures. That's why I said our subsequent meeting, we call it a time frame, we'll be having time and we'll be dissecting some of the you know, uh, issues one after the other. Within your brain, and eh, within your forebrain, there's a portion within your brain, specifically within your forehead, called prefrontal cortex. And then within that prefrontal cortex, it is there that executive function takes place. Thinking, reasoning, when you are doing something, being able to think and analyze what you are doing and know that what you are doing can put you at high risk. All falls within the brain. That function is done within the forebrain, the, with the prefrontal cortex. And then that tetrahydrocannabinol that is found in the drug, in the weed, when it enters the brain, the first point of place that it goes to, you know, attack is that portion. It goes in there to destroy that executive function within the prefrontal cortex, within your forebrain. So they destroy the nerve cells there. So for you to think. To analyze, to see that what you are doing can put you at high risk. It already destroyed, so you do not have that mentality. You do not even have the ability to think, to know that this thing that you are doing can destroy you. Uh, I want to make sense. Yes. That is the work of the detonine tetrahydrocannabinol. It goes in there, it's like a room. If I know that this is the office, this is the place that controls every aspect of the I will enter when, I, when it goes there. It goes to you know disconnect every electronic gadget that you know occurs, CCT camera here, everything. It goes there to destroy it. And it also changes the situation there for you to think that it is that you know marijuana, whatever you are taking, is making you do everything that you want to do. That is how come people get addicted. That one at the level, when in our subsequent meeting, we'll discuss that. Do you get it? So, weed is highly addicted because of the chemical it contains. The nicotine has 
Because the liquid that it has, we be, I'll become your more free. So, so many other things. The answer we share is another thing. Why can't we, and apart, apart from the medicinal advantages, women who have menstrual cramps use it when they are in their period? Why can't we? Why can't we do something about? This research into how to ameliorate the effects, you understand me, so that we can use it, you understand me? Use it for what? Oh, for the next one, I said question. Hello, hello, hello. let me answer you. You know, weed or marijuana has medicinal purpose. I told you. Our subsequent meeting will be answering. That was like there are a whole lot of misconceptions that are going through in our minds, and we'll be addressing them one after the other. Okay. Weed or marijuana is used for medicinal purposes. For instance, Ghana here, I hope we extract oil here, yes. crude oil, yes. at where? Western region, Cape Three Point, precisely. I cannot go there with my motorbike or whatever car that I have to that place and then buy the crude oil and put it in my engine. Why? Because it contains a lot of impurities. So therefore, when I put it in my engine, my engine, my engine what? Will damage. So the oil will have to be carried to them, oil refining for them to refine it, extract gas from it, diesel from it, and add more chemicals to make it safe for me to go there and buy it into my uh, whatever backup I'm using or I'm using. So applies to weed or marijuana. Marijuana is used for medicinal purpose. Listen, the fact that weed is used for my, my, uh, medicinal purpose, like you were saying, that doesn't mean that you should go and take it and smoke it rolling. Yes. You are causing damage to your system. You know why? Before weed is used to prepare medicine, <coughs> it is used to pass through certain mechanisms, certain processes. To extract those harmful chemicals, harmful and then toxic that I eat, that I need, they extract all of them. So the weed is meant to pass through certain stages, and they extract those things from it. And they used to manufacture drugs, and even those drugs are not used. Those drugs are used to treat people with psychosis. People with what? Psychosis. People with mental, severe mental disorders when you go to psychiatric hospitals. Bro, don't let this be deceived by some misconception. The fact that we could be used to prepare drugs, that doesn't guarantee us the right to go and smoke it rolling. It will kill you. Amen. It will destroy you. So we could be used to prepare medicine. And those medicines are used to treat people that have psychological disorders. There are also sometimes when you go to hospital and you sustain severe, you know, eat cat. Especially when you uh, uh, get in acid, you're involved in acid, and you get yeah. They use some with other medicine. They inject the place so the place becomes solid. So they, they stitch the place. You know what point here? Somebody is going for severe oppression. They can use that. So the fact that weed has a medicinal purpose, bro, doesn't guarantee you the right. That we is used to prepare medicine. Fine, if we is used to prepare medicine, all this is happening. And for that, we are going to smoke. Ask yourself, what disease are you curing without you then? Am I making sense? I'm making sense. Yeah, no, yeah. The lady wanted to ask something. So if, I'm coming, if we are. If we are smoking to cure a disease, what's the name of that disease? Isn't that disease sub in Kolebu? Why is it that it's not so there to cure those disease, that disease you are curing? It? it is just what a fallacy, a misconception. Yes, I'm adding on to what you said concerning the medicinal papers. We don't use it directly. Good. We add up other substances Thank to you. make medication Good. to take an effect of or the disease. So if it's for medicinal purpose, doesn't mean we go and take it directly and just give it out to patients. No, it doesn't work like that. No. Which kind of which kind of disease are you people hearing? 
Huh? Which kind of disease are you hearing over there? Mara, it's a natural. Okay. So don't use that. Mara, it's a natural. Yo, please, any question I left with you this go. Let me tell you the things you got. There are more questions. I want you to write those questions down. Come here, boy. Okay, okay, you can. Yeah, please. All you are saying, you are right. Thanks, man. I started smoking at the age of 16 years. And now I'm 52 years. All my friends are dead. All my friends. Blue, alcohol, cigarettes. Whatever I think, I think cigarettes, alcohol, and my joy. Not amnesia, I don't think amnesia. I said, Cyclops, Dr. Advice, you do not smoke. Oh, the teachers, I'm not a six, my heart. Then my liver, the door. If I can't walk from here, yeah. they are a bit fast, so I know what you're talking about. Then my question at all is, can you take one food, one food like cake, three times a day? Is it possible? As I will. Mean. Okay. I appreciate your testimony you just gave. That uh, you started with some colleagues, and at the end of the day, they were, you were, all of you were in that behavior. And then by his grace, not by your word, by his grace, God wanted you to do something for him. That is why, like he was saying, most of his colleagues have died because of the drug they engaged in seven. But he is still, you know, surviving. Because he engaged, he, he sustained his certain, you know, diseases. And the doctor advised him to stop. I appreciate the testimony you have given. Uh, uh, we are talking about can you eat KK rice in a day? Whether it has effect or not. Respectfully, I am not a nutritionist. My is into drugs. So either you eat KK rice in a day has an effect. I can't you know talk or I can't give any answer to that because it's awful. Eating kenke comes with uh, let me say yes, a compliment. So what do you eat with it? You eat with pepper, with okra, stew, with it, the one you are eating with. The kind of soup or the kind of stew you are eating with complement the kinky. So you can eat it five times within a day, but it takes, you can eat it as many as you want. But what you add up, it's not just about the carbohydrate, it goes beyond that. Thank you very much. Thank you, madam. Thank you very much. Thank you. So you add it to balance it. Ah, uh, okay. That's like I said, okay, okay. okay. Oh, it's a natural herb. There's no chemical in it. You can cook it and bring it. The conception around that has pushed some of us to enter into it, and that is why some of us are here to address those issues. Because after when you go to places, they will say, "Oh, so busy, we are here say now." Okay, fine. We are questioning law. Now, my best friend, see, I know, and I swear, and my best friend, see, bro, whichever means you use the drug to enter your system. You can put it in Banku and follow it. The effect will take place. You can even boil it and add tea and milo, add milo, what sugar, add to it and take the effect will take place. Whatever means, whatever for go go and drink it. The effect will take place. The damages will take place. The thing is, don't put it into your system. When you put it into your system, you have caused it. It is your own agreement. So whether you pass it through Banku, so you use, you put it in bread, you put it, some many have advanced and said to read that, they even do it in the form of toffee. You see that it is in a small break in the Yeah, bro, keep taking it. I said we have videos. That has to do with drugs, how those drugs cause drug cancer. I'll show them to you. My question is that when you damage the brain and the lungs, 
Let you come now. Oh, you see what I'm Okay. And for the last question, so the person is here. Uh, oh, who come? Who come? No, but will you judge those persons down? So, uh, who come again? Uh -huh. When you damage the brain uh -huh. and the lungs, yes. And you say, uh, uh, and you stop giving the fine. Will you gain it fresh again, like the way it was? Yeah, we have asked a very nice question. Will you restore? Yes, yes. Will you restore it fresh again? Very nice question. Very nice question.